I'm joined now by Paul Jagot. Paul, as I say, they have thrown uh, two sets of bums out in um, Europe. Right. The question is, what have they replaced them with? But, you know, one thought occurs to me, France especially, is, well, in some ways it's the big one, but um, normally in the past or years ago we would have thought, well, France has a new government, we'll see what happens to the franc. Uh, that's not what is it mainly at issue here anymore. No. The issue is Europe. Europe is in crisis. France is in sign of crisis. But all of these things have implications for, for the larger resolution of the problem that's been going on for well over a year now. And therefore potential implications for us. Yeah. Because we have a stake now in European growth uh, and uh, solving their problems, their, their, their problems. Um, so the question is, Sarkozy, Nicolas Sarkozy, who just lost, had a very close relationship with Angela Merkel, the Chancellor mm -hmm. of Germany. Francois Hollande, the socialist, wants to come in and said, wait a minute, I want to not be so cozy. Uh, I want to make sure that the fiscal pact that they had agreed to is redone so it promotes growth more. And I want the European Central Bank to help us more by buying bonds or maybe even tolerating more inflation. I don't think the Germans are going to go for that, but they're going to have to bend a little bit. I just don't think they're going to go as much, and I think they'll, as, as Olaf wants it wants them to do. Uh, but the Germans and the French have dominated European politics for a long time. I think that will continue. They'll find a way to work together. Well, they claim they will. Um, the, if there anyone paying attention to this subject knows that there are basically two words at the center of it at the moment: austerity and growth. It's a false debate in my view. I was just going to ask you that. It's really quite different than simply austerity, though I think austerity had a lot to do with the results in France and Greece. Well, I, I sympathize with, with Hollande's emphasis on growth. I agree with it. Yeah. The problem with Hollande's agenda is how does he define growth? And they define growth as essentially spending more money with the central government. And that's the phoniness of the European debate, right? Austerity is governments don't spend money. Growth, governments do spend money. <laughs> and it defines the, 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 the process of economic growth as so totally a function of government. And this is the consensus, the intellectual consensus that is dominated by the Financial Times, by the Brussels Mandarins and bureaucrats of the EU, by the International Monetary Fund, by the New York Times, by Bloomberg News, all these people basically believe in that model. And I think you have to break that intellectual model before Europe can get out of its mess. And one way Germany did that right. was when Gerhard Schroeder, the center-left chancellor of Germany before Merkel, actually pushed through difficult labor market reforms, tax reforms, and some other things that really helped get Germany out of its own fiscal mess of a decade ago. You know, that's interesting, Paul. I, I have to ask you, though, do you think uh, Angela Merkel, the German chancellor, is doing enough to make that clear? She keeps talk, saying that the fiscal pact is inviolate, and the implication in what she says that is that what she's demanding is austerity. But right. they took the measures that they needed to take to allow them to grow. Might she not be pushing the real growth side of this argument? I agree with you I, t entirely, Dan. I think they've lost the debate in some sense because they haven't defined what it means. If you actually talk to Mario Monti, the new head of, of uh, Prime Minister of Italy, if you talk to the Germans at the Bundesbank and elsewhere, they'll lay out, well, you know, the labor markets have to be changed. The banks have to be shaped up in these countries. The tax regime has to be changed. The, uh, the regulatory environment has to be improved. They'll tell you all those, but those don't somehow make it into the larger discussion. Even if, I mean, Monty's trying to do that in, uh, in Italy and tried to pass a, a labor market reform. The problem I think that Hollande is going to face in France is the things he campaigned on aren't going to promote growth. Yeah, right. Raising the tax rate to 75 percent, you know what that's going to accomplish? This is going to, it's going to make Drive a lot, people out of the country. You're going to be in, you're going to hear a lot more French spoken in London. <laughs> you know, <laughs> because they can move there, of course, under the EU without any problem. So they're, and they can, unlike Americans, French can leave France yeah. and not pay French tax rates.